When it comes to your battle rope, you want a 50 foot battle rope. You want it to be nylon. You don't want a hemp one. And uh, you want it to be one and a half inches thick. You can buy them two inches thick, don't do it. Unless you're like John Cena or Dwayne Johnson or somebody like enormous, two inch rope is not going, it's gonna to be too much. Black is better because it doesn't stain as much. What you wanna do is you wanna wrap this rope around some sort of an anchor point or you can wrap it around a plate. If you have a bumper plate or a metal plate, any sort of plate will do. What you want to do in this workout, first of all, is let everybody know how, what the intervals are. So in this particular workout, we have a front wave, we have a side wave, and then we have power slam. And you can do them a 30 second set. It depends if you're gonna let them rest in between. If you have a group of people, or let's say you have one battle rope and you have three people, you could do a three to one work to rest ratio. Or you could, if they're uh, an advanced athlete, you could have them go through 30 second intervals without rest for each exercise. And that would take them a minute and a half. I, I don't care who you are, a minute and a half of battle rope will take you to count. Absolutely. There's not much else that I know that raises the metabolism higher with upper body work than doing battle rope. Phenomenal for that. It's great for developing speed. It's great for developing power. It's awesome, awesome for getting a wicked shoulder workout. And I mean, I could go on and on. Your first exercise, keep in mind that positioning here for battle rope is your power position. So legs slightly bent. You want your shoulders back, chest out, slight bend in the hip. Feet are approximately shoulder or just a little outside shoulder width apart. Okay, different from Olympic lifting and squatting where you want your feet around hip width apart. Your power position is a little bit more stabilized with wider foot placement. Now you're not pulling back on the rope. It's not a tug of war with the rope. You're in the athletic position, okay, and you're in charge of your own balance. And, you're, and what you're doing is you're causing a wave to go all the way to the anchor point of the rope. You can do small waves, big waves, very large waves. Keeping that body position. So there's your front wave, 30 seconds of that. And then your side wave. For the side wave, the cue for this is going Hulk on this. Rah. So it's like your most muscular pose in bodybuilding. That's it. So you're gonna be working lateral, so your middle deltoid going out this way, and then your lats, but mainly I would say more of your pecs coming in. And then the last part of that three exercise circuit would be your power slam. And this just drives home the fatigue. And I love, this was one of my favorite battle rope exercises because if you have any aggression in you, you can just let it out. Because this is just a. So you're just going to town on that rope with the battle. Oh, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> I'm so trying that. Great way to get your aggression out. Bam, with that battle rope. Feels real good. So the next exercise is that we have jumping jacks, side to side lunges. Small to large reverse. Small to larger. Jumping jacks, significantly more challenging with the rope as opposed to regular jumping jacks. So think of it being equivalent to like, like doing jumping jacks with five pound dumbbells. Side to side, I usually have the people do it without the rope first to get the movement pattern. So you're taking the rope, you're whipping it this way. While you're whipping it this way, you're pivoting yourself into a lunge. So I'm gonna be focused on this leg, boom. And then I'm gonna take the rope up, pulling on it a little bit. Then I'm gonna be focused on Boom, that leg. We're getting different planes of motion here. So what plane of motion would this one be? OK, 
Transverse, yeah, since you're pivoting. Transverse. Very good. What plane of motion is the jumping jack? Frontal. And then this one here is not so much for this movement, it's this movement. Biceps and triceps. Notice I'm holding the rope with an undergrip and you want to turn them out because what you don't want to do is clock yourself with the rope, right? So again, athletic position, small elbow. Working the elbow, going large, going small, large, small, large. So jumping jacks, side lunges, then small to large for biceps. The next one is not a wave, but it is also, but it is my favorite exercise for shoulders. Out of all the shoulder workouts that you can do, this one here is one of my favorites. And it's a press, the battle rope here, a 50 foot long, one and a half inch battle rope weighs 20 pounds. But there's a leverage component because the anchor point is way over there. So when I do this shoulder press, the objective is to have the rope off the ground the entire time. can usually hit about eight to 12 of these. Okay, so while I'm in that shoulder press position, I'm giving a lot more leverage advantage to the weight of the rope as I extend. As I go into that shoulder press, the rope is pulling this way. So I'm having to pull this way as well as shoulder press the rope. Modification here, much easier, okay? Because there's this rope from here all the way down to here that's providing counter leverage. The other option, if you don't want to provide the counter leverage, but you do want to make the rope a little bit easier, you go to the anchor point and you, you shorten the rope and tie a loop. So I'm wrapping this around here tying a knot in it like this. So there's your, your shoulder. Then I have a burpee power slam. So you can do your burpees where your chest is hitting the floor, crossfit style, or you could do them plank style where chest doesn't touch the floor. You can do the burpees where you let your fingers out and you do your hands are landing on the rope, or you can let go of the rope and hands are hitting the ground. So, you can do one arm movement. Mix it up a little bit, definitely takes it up a notch. The last one is a side wave to a chest press. So I'm here, three, four, press. One, two, four, press. One, two, three, four, press. One, two, four, press. So there you have your workout. How do we modify by making it harder or easier. Progression or regression. Let's take the front wave. You can put it, put some legs in there instead of having the hands inside. You can take them outside. Okay, integrate a combination. Motor coordination, proprioception, balance, stability, would be incorporated into doing something like that. What about increasing the interval from 30 seconds to 45 seconds for your hammerheads that are in really good shape? You can increase the time length. You can increase the frequency of the weight. Move it faster, move it faster. You can also, this was going, so this is going bilateral, right? I can put the rope together like this, athletic position, that. 
So that's going to make it more challenging for the upper body and also maintaining that position. Now, most of the time with battle rope, you're going to be trying to think of ways that you can make the exercise easier. One of the ways that you can regress the exercise with the ropes that I like is you can have people have two hands together and do the wave together. The other option is to put this rope on the ground and put your foot on it. That is substantially easier. Do a combination of standing up movement and then sitting down movement. So all of this stuff can be done from a seated position. Last but not least are the rope drags. A really great way to do the rope drags is attaching to a sled. 2013 CrossFit Games, I think it was, they had a rope pull with the sled. Like 300 pounds the, the, men's, the men's division was pulling, right? Of course, you can make all of this stuff fun competitive. So instead of having an anchor point, you have another person on the end of those ropes. You have two ropes and they're, they're using ropes in tandem with each other. So they're doing the waves together, they're doing the pulls on stuff, okay? These next ones, these pulls, are basically that. So you're starting from this part of the rope, okay? And you're pulling. The other way, you pull this way. You can have the coach on the other end, okay, providing that you resistance manually, or you can wrap it around once or even wrap it around twice, right, to provide the amount of friction needed. Now, I'll just show you, I had nine to 12 people, had three ropes who were outside on a grassy lawn, joined all three ropes together at the middle, like this. 